So let me just repeat the basic structure of the argument. The universe and all that we perceive is either independent, dependent on something else dependent, or dependent on something independent and eternal. The universe and all that we perceive cannot be independent or dependent on something else dependent. Therefore, the universe and all that we perceive depends on something independent and eternal. That's the basic structure of the argument, okay? Now before we go into the nitty-gritty of the argument, it's very important for us to understand what we mean by dependent in this context. And before I define what we mean by dependent in this context, I want you to focus on this rational principle. It is the mark of a rational mind to question that which did not have to be. This is the kind of cognitive, intellectual motivation for this argument. It's the sign of a sound aql, a sound intellect. It's a, it's a sign of a rational mind to question that which didn't have to be. If we, if we go to the park and we see a hovering yellow ball, we're not going to pass the hovering yellow ball and say, hey, the ball necessarily exists in the park hovering in the way that it does. No, because you're an intelligent human being and you think to yourself, why is the ball there? How is it hovering? Because it's a sign of a rational mind to question that which didn't have to be. The hovering ball didn't have to be there. So this is the kind of motivation, cognitive, intellectual motivation, intuitive motivation for this argument. Which is, it's the sign of an intelligent mind to question something that didn't have to be the way that it is. For example, if we're driving and we pass a roundabout and on the roundabout we see an arrangement of flowers that says La ilaha illallah Right? You're not going to be like, hey that arrangement of flowers necessarily exists in that way. No! Because you can just tell intuitively and intelligently using your cognitive faculties, your rational faculties that there is something about this arrangement of flowers that is telling me it didn't have to be the way that it is. So it's a sign, it's a mark of a rational mind to question it. Why is it that, why is it that way? Why is there an arrangement of flowers that says La ilaha illallah, there is no deity worthy of worship but Allah. And some of the explanations could be, oh, it was chance, there was a wind that blew, it could be that there was a gardener, whatever the case may be, it requires an explanation. This is very important for us to understand. The whole motivation behind this argument of dependency is that it's a sign of a rational mind to question that which didn't have to be. So let's now define dependency. Let's define what we mean by dependency. But by the way, in the philosophical literature, you may see this argument being termed and, and, and being labeled as the argument from contingency. And you may see this in Islamic textbooks, Islamic creed books, that when you see translations, for example, of Aqidah Tahawiyya, for example, you would see that it would mention maybe the word contingent. You see that a lot, especially in creed textbooks, especially in the translation of an explanation of Aqidah Tahawiyya. So, I like to use the word dependency because it's more common. Contingency is, you know, it's, it's a bit of a tough word. Not that I'm shy of using tough words, but you get the point. So what do we mean by dependent? The first thing, the first definition of dependent in the context of this argument is that it is not necessary. So something is dependent if it is not necessary. Now you may ask the question, Hamza, what do we mean by necessary? Necessary means it was impossible for it to have not existed. Let me repeat, the concept of necessity is not a kind of concept that we use every day. It's more of a philosophical, theological concept that Something that is necessary is something in which it was impossible for it to have not existed. It necessarily exists. Okay? So this is what we mean by necessary. So therefore, something that is dependent is something that is not necessary. Which means, what? It means it could have not existed. That's what dependency means. That something is dependent if it was possible 
for it to not exist. For example, am I necessary? No, there's no, nothing necessary about my existence. I could have not existed, right? This wall could have not existed. There is nothing necessary about this wall. My observations of this wall, my understanding of this wall, the features of this wall do not cry out to me saying that it is necessary. It was impossible for it to have not existed. In actual fact, it's the opposite. It could have not existed, right? Good. For example, let me give you another example. I'm going to give you lots of examples of these concepts can drill in your mind. I'm hungry. It's three in the morning. Okay? It's a hot summer, so you get hungry and you get thirsty. So what do I do? I wake up, I go downstairs, walk to the kitchen, and I open the fridge. And the light comes on, right? You know when you open the fridge, the refrigerator, the light comes on. And what, I, what do I see? I see a pen on top of a egg box. <coughs> do I close the fridge and say, the pen and egg box necessarily exist in the fridge? No. I start to think, why and how on earth is the pen on top of the egg box in the fridge? Because there is, there is nothing necessary about the arrangement. There's nothing necessary about their placement in the fridge. There's nothing necessary about the pen being on top of the egg box. In actual fact, they could have been arranged in a different way. They could have not existed at all. In actual fact, the pen and egg box could have been on top of the fridge. It could have been in the food cupboard. The pen could have been in the egg box, like it could have been stabbed in the egg box for example. You get the point, it could have been arranged and placed in a different way. There is nothing necessary about the arrangement of the pen and the egg box and the placement and existence of the pen and the egg box. So what does this mean? It means it requires an explanation. But what type of explanation? It doesn't explain itself, it must be an external explanation. Because it, if it explains itself, it means it's necessary. It means it's necessary. It means that, that it was impossible for it to have not existed. But that's not the type of explanation that we're looking for now. Because it is dependent. It is contingent. There is nothing necessary about the pen and the egg box. Therefore, it requires an explanation external to itself. So what are the possible explanations in this case? The possible explanations in this case is the pen was designed by somebody, was made by somebody, uh, my wife bought it, she gave it to the children, they were playing with it, then my son opened the fridge and put it on top of the egg box, for example. Yeah? Explanation for the egg box, we like eggs, we bought eggs, you know, eggs came from a chicken, right? Or whatever the case may be. The point is, there is an external explanation to explain the existence, presence, arrangement of the pen and the egg box. Therefore, it's dependent. Make sense so far? Yeah. Good. Second definition of dependency. The components or basic building blocks, the components or fundamental building blocks could have been arranged in a different way. So take material substance, for example, any material substance, a mobile phone, a house, a car, or even, even something smaller. It has fundamental building blocks. Fundamental building blocks. Those building blocks are arranged in a particular way. There is nothing necessary about that arrangement. It could have been arranged in another way. There's nothing necessary about that arrangement. That arrangement doesn't explain itself. It requires an explanation external to it. Let me give you an example. And I've mentioned this earlier. Imagine we're driving a car. We stop near a roundabout. Actually, let's stop. we stop near a park. And we've parked up our car and we're, we're, we're next to the park. And in the park we see an arrangement of flowers. And the arrangement of flowers says, I love you. Now there's nothing necessary about the arrangement of the flowers. Those flowers do not explain themselves. The, the, there is a requirement, there is a need to explain the arrangement of the flowers external to the flowers. And possible explanations could include what? It could, it could include it was a gust of wind. Or it could, include, it, could, it could include that it was a gardener. Like the local council told the gardener to 
place the flowers in those way, in, in, the place the flowers in that formation, in that arrangement. So the point here is the fundamental fundamental building blocks of things, of any material substance, any physical substance, could have been arranged in a different way. Because we could ask the question, why is it arranged in that way and not another way? And that question itself give ri gives rise to an explanation that's external to the arrangement. It requires an explanation external to that particular arrangement. The other definition of dependency is a very common sense linguistic notion of dependency that it requires something outside of itself to exist. It's not self-subsisting. It requires something outside of itself to exist. Like for example, you had lunch earlier. If you don't have lunch for a few days and a few weeks, you won't be here anymore, right? You require something outside of yourself in order for you to exist. You are dependent in that way. Interestingly, and th I want you to focus on this because this is an important, this is a very important kind of definition of dependency. Dependent things Dependent things have limited physical qualities. Okay? So dependent things have limited physical qualities. Another way of putting it, the defining feature of a dependent thing is that it has limited physical qualities. For example, look at this coffee cup. This coffee cup has limited physical qualities, right? It has a certain shape, temperature, size, volume, capacity, smell even, charge, and its volume, shape, size, color, etc. is limited. It is particular. For example, I don't know, it's, it has a volume of say, I don't know, half a liter or maybe 300 milliliters or whatever the case may be. Now you could ask the question, why is it this shape and size and not another shape and size? Why is it this color and not another color? Why is it this smell and not another smell? Why is it this temperature and not another temperature? Why is it this charge and not another charge? It, therefore, you could ask the question, what explains its limited physical qualities? Well, it can't explain itself because the cup, and listen to this very carefully, the cup did not give rise to its limited physical qualities. The cup did not give rise to its limited physical qualities. There must be an explanation outside of the cup that explains the cup. Sound like Bruce Lee now, right? You know, you know his famous statement of if you put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. If you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. I believe he took this from Imam Shafi, rahimullah. Imam Shafi has a statement on water. It's almost very similar. I'm going to read it to you later, actually. Anyway, forget my kind of uh, links between different historical figures. Let me give you another example. Take my mobile phone. Mobile phone has a specific shape, size, color, temperature, texture, charge, smell, right? And it's, these things are limited. It has limited physical quality. So you ask yourself the question, why is it this size? Why is it this shape? Why is it this volume? Why is it this temperature? Why is it this color? <coughs> this phone doesn't explain its own limited physical qualities. It can't. And it can't give rise to its own limited physical qualities. So therefore, it requires an external explanation to explain its limited physical qualities. Alhamdulillah. So let's apply this definition of dependency to the universe and we can come to the following explanations possible explanations number one the universe and all that we perceive are eternal necessary and independent or the universe and all that we perceive depends for its existence on something else which is also dependent or the universe and all that we perceive is dependent for its existence on something necessary and that is accordingly eternal and independent. So we've understood what dependency means, we gave around four or five definitions. 
and now we want to apply it to the universe and once we apply it to the universe which conclusion are we going to come up with? Is it going to be that the universe and all that we perceive are eternal, necessary and independent? Or is it that the universe and all that we perceive depends for its existence on something else which is also dependent? Or are we going to conclude that the universe and all that we perceive is dependent for its existence on something necessary that is accordingly eternal and independent? So let's now start to conceptualize. Could the universe and all that we perceive be eternal, necessary and independent? Given what we've discussed about the definition of dependency, I want you to answer this question. Come on, Richard. Yes, Sheikh. It could have been arranged in a different uh, way, maybe the stars and the planets. And Good. So there's a few things we can now start to understand. Well, the universe and all that we perceive, they're based on fundamental building blocks. If you remember, one of the defining, one of the definitions of dependency is that the fundamental building blocks or components of that thing has a certain arrangement. Right? It doesn't have to be like physical bits of matter, it could be even like quantum fields, whatever you want. The point is, there is a particular arrangement. Why that arrangement and not another arrangement? Now that arrangement doesn't explain itself. Therefore, it requires an external explanation to explain the arrangement. Now you could ask anyone a question. What are the fundamental building blocks of the universe and everything that we perceive? They could give you 50 answers. It doesn't matter. The point is, whatever answer they give you, you could raise the question. Did that arrangement give rise to itself? No, there must have been an external thing or set of factors or whatever the case may be that gave rise to that particular arrangement. So from that definition, you can't say the universe and all that we perceive is independent, is dependent by the very definition. Give me another answer. Yes, so the universe and all that we perceive have limited physical qualities and we discussed things that have limited physical qualities did not give rise to themselves therefore there must be an external explanation to explain the limited physical qualities of the universe or even the fundamental building blocks of the universe or even things within the universe whether it's plants, trees, stars, galaxies, whatever the case may be or even if something even more smaller and fundamental like quarks which are in an atom, right? The point here is, they have limited physical qualities and they can't give rise to their own limitations therefore there is an external explanation or external set of factors that gave rise to those limitations Give me another reason why the universe and all that we perceive could not be independent Okay when you, when you apply that to the universe, maybe. Let's pause that for now, we'll readdress it. But let's pick something else. What's the easiest one, the first one that we mentioned? No, that was the third one. What was the first one we mentioned? Not it's not necessary. Absolutely, and this is in our, our creedal books. There's nothing necessary about the universe, meaning that there is an explanation for the emergence, creation and reality and existence of the universe. The universe doesn't explain itself because necessity means that the thing that you're talking about or the phenomenon that you're talking about explains itself and that means it necessarily exists. But the universe doesn't necessarily exist. What do we talk about in the beginning? It's the sign, it's the mark of a rational mind to question that which didn't have to be. The universe could have been Another universe, it could have, we, even scientifically they say this universe didn't have to be the way that it is. There could have been another universe with different features and different laws, for example. The universe didn't have to exist at all. It's contingent, it's dependent from that point of view because it is not necessary. And just to remind you, what does necessity mean? Necessity means that it was impossible for it to have not existed. It was impossible for it to have not existed. But that's not the case for the universe because it was possible for it to not have existed. That's the point. So it's dependent by definition. So good, this is excellent. See how we applying the concepts here? So we can conclude that the universe and all that we perceive are not independent. They're not independent and therefore they're not necessary.
Second point, the universe and all that we perceive depends for its existence on something else which is also dependent. So that's the second possible explanation. We know the first possible explanation is false. What about this one? How do you answer this question? How do you answer and deal with this possible explanation? So some would argue, fine, the universe is dependent. It's not necessary. It requires an explanation for its existence. However, that explanation is also something else dependent. How would you address this? Somebody gave it the order of fashion that it is. Yes, but they would say that thing itself is also dependent. What they're saying here is, yes, we agree the universe is dependent from what you've just discussed. It's not independent and necessary. But what explains the existence and the features of the universe and everything within it is something else that's also dependent. Is that a good explanation for us? Yes? Absolutely! You have an infinite regress of dependencies. What we're looking for is an explanation. You haven't explained anything. You're just saying what explains a dependent thing is another dependent thing. Okay, what explains that dependent thing? Oh, another dependent thing. You, you're not giving us any explanation here in any shape or form. That's the point. And you have an absurdity of an infinite regress of dependencies. Because the only way to ultimately explain things that are not necessary, the only way to ultimately explain dependent things is to refer to something that is not dependent and therefore necessary. Otherwise you don't have an, exp an ultimate explanation. And as you said, that an infinite number of dependencies is impossible as we discussed in the previous session when we talked about the Quranic argument for God's existence. However, let me just move back because I want to test you on this. What if the universe was eternal? And that's why I like this argument. Because you could assume the universe is eternal. Not that we adopt that because that would be kufr, right? That would be a form of disbelief. But even if people bring that to the table, you can address it. Because you don't have to rely on any scientific evidence for this argument. As I said, this is a first principles argument. You could absorb any science. Ahlan wa sahlan, welcome. And the argument still works. It's a timeless argument. This is why all the schools of creed in Islam <coughs> adopted this argument. You'll see it. In the different conceptions of Aqid al-Tahawiyya, they would refer to the argument from uh, contingency, necessity, the argument from dependency. You'll see this, right? So. The point being, what if the universe was eternal? And they'll be, like, they'll be like, see? The universe is eternal, the universe explains itself. How would you deal with that point? Think about it. So they have agreed with you so far. Okay Hamza, I've agreed with you about this argument, it's very good. It's intuitive, it's based on first principles. You know, we don't have to include any science in this because it transcends science. It's a metaphysical argument. I, I agree with what you're saying about necessity and dependency and contingency. That's fine. I agree that the universe cannot be independent and necessary. But, you know what, what if the universe is eternal? Doesn't that mean that therefore the universe is necessary? Think about it. No, it doesn't. Even if the universe was eternal, so what? It doesn't mean now it necessarily exists. And here's an interesting example. Imagine there are an infinite number of human beings. Each human being was produced by the biological activity of their parents. And each of these parents was in turn produced by the biological activity of their parents ad infinitum. Wouldn't it still be perfectly reasonable to ask, why are there any human beings at all? Fine, even if it's an eternal number of, infinite number of human beings, fine, let's take it. The universe is eternal. Let's just accept it for one moment. How does that now follow, it's therefore necessary? I agree, for something to be necessary, it has to be eternal. But for something to be eternal, it doesn't mean it has to be necessary. Do you get the logic here? Let me repeat. For something to be necessary, it has to be eternal. Why? Because if it was finite, it requires an explanation why it's finite, right? So it's not necessary anymore. However, something be eternal doesn't mean it has to be necessary. Although, if something is necessary, it has to be eternal. 
So in this case they're saying, well the universe is eternal, therefore it's necessary. That doesn't logically follow. Because you can have an infinite number of human beings, right, that exist for eternity. But you could still ask the question, why are the human beings in existence in the first place? Because it's the sign of a rational mind to question that which didn't have to be. There is nothing necessary about their existence. And each part of the chain of the human beings, you could ask, why are they there? Their fundamental building blocks of those, of those, of those human beings could have been arranged in a particular way, in a different way. Each of those human beings have limited physical qualities that didn't give rise to themselves. There must be an external explanation that gave rise to those limited physical qualities of those human beings and every human being in that chain. So whether you think it's eternal or not is irrelevant for this argument. It still follows that it requires an external explanation. There's nothing necessary about your so-called eternal universe because it, there could have been another eternal universe with different features and laws for example. In actual fact, the, it, it, there could have been a universe that wasn't eternal but finite. There could have been a universe that didn't exist at all. Right? There's nothing necessary about the existence of your so-called eternal universe. So it doesn't follow just because something is eternal, it therefore it, it means it must be necessary. That doesn't follow. And this thought experiment by showing that imagine you had an infinite number of human beings, you still could perfectly ask the question, well why are the human beings there in the first place? And why, they that, why, why do they have those limited physical qualities? Why are they arranged in that particular way? So, the universe is not independent, necessary and eternal. Number two, the universe that's dependent cannot be explained by something else that's dependent. And even if you claim the universe is eternal, it doesn't follow that it's necessary. So therefore, the best explanation, the only rational explanation is, the universe and all that we perceive depends on something independent and eternal. Why is it independent? Very simple. Because if it were dependent, it would require an explanation. Therefore, you don't have any answer. It has to be eternal, because if it was not eternal, in other words, finite, it would be dependent, and finite things require an explanation for their existence. Dependent things require an explanation for, for their existence. So it has to be independent and eternal. Therefore, we can conclude that the universe and everything that we perceive depends upon something that is eternal and independent and this is best explained by the Islamic conception of the Divine that Allah is independent He necessarily exists and this terminology exists in our creed textbooks As you see in the Islamic tradition Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah is independent of all that exists O mankind, it is you who stand in need of Allah whereas He alone is self-sufficient, the one whom all praise is due and Ibn Kathir, the, the exegete, the one who explained the Qur'an, the classical scholar, he mentions concerning the above verse, they need him in all that they do, and he has no need of them at all. He is unique in his being, free of all needs, and has no partner or associate. However, as you know, the human being is a contentious fellow, as the Qur'an says. You know, we want to split the, split the hair in an infinite number of ways, as they say. The first contention is, well, the universe exists independently. This is an easy contention because we've addressed it in the argument. They will say, oh, well, the universe, yeah, it's got limited physical qualities. The universe needs explanation, but who cares? It just exists independently. Well, the easy way to deal with this is, well, that's a cop-out. Because we already know that the universe and everything that we perceive within it has limited physical qualities. Its fundamental building, blo building blocks are arranged in a particular way. Why is it that arrangement, not another particular arrangement? Therefore, it requires an external explanation. There is nothing necessary about the universe itself. When we observe and try to even perceive the universe, there's nothing that cries out to us that says it's necessarily existing. No. In actual fact, it's the opposite. When we live and experience the universe and the cosmos, it's actually telling us that it could have not existed, right? There's nothing necessary about its existence. Meaning, it could have not existed. There is nothing necessary about the way that it is, right? So, that's a cop-out. You can't just claim it's independent just because you want it to. Well, there's a little bit more of a complex contention. It says, well, the universe is a brute fact. It's just a brute fact, get over it. You'll never know. And it's just a brute fact, forget about it. 
There is no explanation for the universe. That's what they're basically saying here. This is a Bertrand Russell argument. I think he mentioned this in the 1960s in a BBC radio debate he had with someone. He said it's a brute fact. There's no explanation for the universe. Get over it. Get over it. How would you address this? Go for it. Uh, it's not an argument. It's just. <coughs> yeah, it's not an argument, but why? It's not a rational argument. But why is it not a rational argument? Something that, can, something that exists must have come. Well, not always the case. Not something that exists must have come from something. Something that began to exist must have come from something. And something that exists that is not necessary must have an explanation. Because you can't say everything that exists comes from something because Allah exists, right? And plus, even philosophers would never say that everything that exists has a cause. That's not true. Everything that begins to exist has a cause. Or everything that exists that has features that show that it's not necessary requires an explanation. Which is a little bit more subtle with those things, yeah? Yes. So I'm saying a dependent thing has no explanation. explanation. Yeah, so good, well done. So basically what they're saying is, well a dependent thing like, like the universe has no explanation. Well it does have explanation, you just don't know the explanation yet or you're not willing to go down that path because it would end up with, with God, right? And that's why people like to, to not address these cosmic conclusions. Let, let, let me make you think about this, right? As I said in the beginning, imagine you're walking down the street and you see a hovering green ball. Does that hovering green ball exist necessarily? No. 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 Is there anything necessary about its existence? No. Because it could have not been there, right? It's possible for it to not have been there at all, correct? Good. Now get that green ball and make it the size of the earth. Does it necessarily exist? Same question applies, doesn't it? Now make it the size of the galaxy. Same question exists. Make it the size of the universe. Same question exists. There you go. You can't say it's a brute fact. It requires an explanation. That's the point. And what is that explanation? Now if you follow this argument through properly, rationally, use your rational faculties, your cognitive abilities, then you will come to the conclusion the only ultimate explanation that explains the dependency of the universe is that there is an independent an eternal being that gave rise or explains this universe. That's the point. And what's interesting is it's counter science. It's anti-science. It also goes against other spheres of knowledge. Why? Well take science specifically here. Isn't there a field of science that deals with the question of the, about the universe? How it began to exist? It's called cosmology. That, that answer, that contingent itself is denying a whole sphere of knowledge in science which is cosmology the beginning of the universe, how it began you know, the Big Bang and all the different 17 different models that they have at the moment, right? That's the point Following on from this what if someone says science will find an answer? I don't need to read the answer so I'm just moving back What if they say, you know what, this is God of the gaps, Hamza You're basing this on ignorance, you have ignorance of an explanation, and ignorance of, of the scientific explanation or we don't currently have a scientific explanation for the universe in terms of why it is the way that it is and about its necessity and dependency and all of these related concepts you're just squeezing God there, you're squeezing an independent eternal being just to satisfy your ignorance, right? How would you address this? Yes? Yes, I would argue that this contention is based upon an internal denial of the divine because they don't want God to be in the equation anyway, fine. But let's just take what they're saying for fa at face value. They're saying, Hamza, you don't know the science, there is no scientific explanation at the moment. Therefore, you're just squeezing God in there because you have a gap in your understanding. That's not an argument. Right? So how do we respond to this? Well, it's very easy, I mentioned this in the beginning. Science is irrelevant to this argument. It's not an empirical argument. It is a 
First principle, metaphysical argument. You could bring all the science you want. Ahlan wa sahlan. Let's open the door. Come inside. All this, you could bring a scientific explanation in 3050, if we're still alive, like humans that is, yeah? Bring anything you want. Why? Because what can science only refer to? If you study the philosophy of science and the method of science, what can science only refer to? Well, let me give you a hint. A atheist philosopher, Professor Elliot Sober, in his essay, Empiricism, what does he say? At any, at any moment, scientists are restricted to the observations they have at hand. Can you observe something necessary? Because the minute you observe it, you can only observe limited physical qualities, which means you can only observe dependent things. Science can only refer to things that are dependent. So whatever scientific answer, explanation, theory, whatever the case may be, musing, right, that they come up with, it would always refer to something that is dependent. So the, the interesting thing here is, science can never solve this question, it's a metaphysical question. That's the point. And that's why I love this argument, you don't have to be a scientist. You just have to be a thinker. And Muslims are thinkers, right? Do you see the point? Yeah. So whatever science, even they say, oh, there's a multiverse, there's a million universes, there's a billion universes, there's a world ensemble, there's uh, a spaghetti monster, or whatever they, whatever they want to bring. If they bring anything that's scientific, it would always refer to something that is dependent. Alhamdulillah. As I said here, this is not a scientific argument, it is a metaphysical one based on first principles. All that science can do is provide answers that will refer to phenomena that are dependent. Science cannot point to something that necessarily exists. So, we've defined dependency, we've applied that definition, and each time we define the different aspects of what we mean by dependent, we gave practical examples, then we applied that to the universe, then we had three logical explanations. The universe is independent and eternal, or the universe is dependent but it depends on something else that's dependent, it's explained by something else that's dependent, or the universe is explained by something that's independent and eternal. We dealt with all of those issues and we concluded the universe must be as a result or is explained by something that is independent and eternal. I believe this is enough to awaken the truth within. If you remember what we discussed about the fitrah, the innate disposition, it gets clouded, this argument can awaken the truth within. And if there are more nitty-gritty type of questions, then I think that would be an indicator that something else is going on, maybe something psychosocial, psycho-spiritual, and maybe just engage with them in a polite way, buy them dinner, right? Because I think this is enough to awaken that intuitive truth within. So, you had a question, sir? No. Okay, good. Yes, sir? You mentioned that uh, a person could live the multiple Yes. Yes, absolutely. That, so the point is, whatever they bring to you, even if they give you a scientific explanation and they say that it's eternal, that's not a problem because we said eternal things are not necessary, that are not always necessary. But necessary things are always eternal. But it's not that eternal things are always necessary. So even if they give you an eternal number of universes, those universes are still dependent. So they're just explaining the dependent universe by more dependent things. Science can never refer to something that is necessary from that point of view. Because the minute it, 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 it's a scientific explanation or a scientific conclusion, is the minute that it becomes dependent because it's based on something that you can observe and we can only observe limited physical qualities. That's it. It's actually that simple. So if people say you've just made up the idea of necessity just to squeeze God in as an explanation, no we haven't. We, we've talked about the idea that the universe is dependent and we define what that means and everything within it is dependent and we define what dependent means and then we've come to the conclusion that the only thing to explain that ultimately is a necessary independent eternal being lo and behold that is in line with the Islamic conception of God so we haven't made up necessity just to prove God and plus necessity as a concept exists in Western philosophy anyway especially in logic so it's not a problem yeah we haven't made this term up also, if someone says, well, doesn't God require an explanation? No, because we just discussed that God is the independent, necessary, eternal being. And by definition, necessary beings explain themselves by virtue of their own existence. They don't require an explanation external to themselves. So there you go. Job done. <laughs>